Hi everybody, this is Brian James, and here's a sneak peek of the end result from this tutorial series on modeling and rendering a product in Rhino 5. We'll be doing the packaging as well and applying the graphics, and at the very end we'll even touch on some ray tracing with uh, the Neon plugin. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial series, and thanks for watching. All right, let's get started with a new file and we'll choose small objects millimeters and we'll need a bounding box for the extents of our toothbrush design so I'm going to start with a box and make this from center and the center will be at zero and we'll call it uh, 13 millimeters wide 190 millimeters long and for the height of it uh, we'll call it 25 millimeters tall and then I'll use ZEA, which is a macro for zoom extents all viewports, to look at our bounding box. I'll select the bounding box and lock it so that we don't move it or select it. It's just visually helpful in designing the shape of the toothbrush. Next we'll make a circle and we'll use the deformable option. I'll turn on my grid snap here and in the front view I'll make one circle that's about the width. And then I'll drag this back to the end of the toothbrush. And I'll maximize perspective and I want to array this along the length of the bounding box. We're using a bunch of circles here for a loft. So I'll go into the transform tools and grab array linear, which is the name of the command. And you can pick the number of items to uh, make and we'll choose Let's use 9 instead. And I'll hold down the Shift key, which enables Ortho, and that'll just keep everything in a straight line, and then I'll set that. Okay, next we'll make a loft, and that'll be in the Surface Tools, and that's the icon for it. The command is loft. Now I want to record history on this, so updating the deformable circles will update the surface. So I'll click Record History at the bottom of the screen. Then I'll select all the circles, enter, enter, and I'll use the normal style, and I won't simplify, so it'll use the control points on the circles for the structure of the surface. Now if I click here, I can get the surface or I can get the curve, and if you click in just the right spot, you see the selection menu. Now I don't want to constantly have to choose curve over surface here in updating this shape, so I'm going to open up the filters here, the selection filters, and uncheck surfaces. So I'm not allowed to select surfaces. Now I like to leave this up so that I don't forget that I unchecked that. And now you can start to edit. I'll turn off grid snap. And you can see how that updates the loft. Now I'll continue to edit this design and I want to do it in the side view here. So I'll use control tab with a maximized viewport to cycle through until I see the right view. Now what I'm going to do for these last three circles is pretty interesting. I'm going to be using the gumball here to scale and I'm holding down shift which is important because that keeps them circles and doesn't turn them into ellipses. And I'm going to line up all three of them to be in the exact same plane. And this is going to uh, create a smooth transition right at the end. So if I go back to perspective here, you can see these guys. I'll use ZS to zoom in on them. If you scale like this, you bring them closer to each other in just the Y axis. Now you can do this numerically if you just click there and type 0, you're scaling by 0 in the y-axis, and this flattens them into the same plane without distorting them because it was just in that single axis. And then I'll scale in, I'll hold down shift. And so the trick here is that you want to make this a really small area at the end, and it will be a planar opening, so we can use cap to fill it up. All right, now I'm going to do a little uh, speed up here of the video capture as I design this. 
and then I'll come back with some more descriptions. And here I'm just adjusting those circular cross sections. Uh, hold down shift to keep the scale uniform. You can turn on control points and history is going to update the loft so you can design on the fly. Okay, we might tweak that a little bit more on the underneath here for any sort of overmold or, or grip detail that's in another material. Um, and I'll just turn on these uh, control points again and grab the bottom three for both. Just drag that down a little bit. Give it a little bit more substance right there. All right, then turn off those control points and go into the top view. We'll just shrink that width a little bit as we transition into the head of the toothbrush. Now for the head of the toothbrush, I'll draw a curve and I'll put my grid snap back on here. and I'm just drawing one half of it. And I'll mirror that. Now if you like the icons, the mirror icon is this one right here in the transform tools. And I'll join those together, with the join command. And I'll give it just a straight line right there and join that in as well. And then I'll take this and I want to make a planar surface, uh, which is essentially the same thing as a trimmed surface. And then I'll delete the curve. Now at this point, I don't really need my visual bounding box any longer. So I'll unlock all objects and throw this on another layer. Right clicking there, change object layer. Now you can also just click right here and throw it on any layer you want and it'll go to that one. And then I'll turn off the visibility of that layer. In case I want it again, the active layer is still the default. And then I'll go back to perspective and into shaded. Now I can't select this right now, and this is why I left the selection filter box up, because I still have surfaces unchecked. So I'll turn that back on and then I'll close my selection filters. And I want to make a solid here, so I'm going to um, make this probably about three or four millimeters tall, so I'll just type 4, enter, and that limits my movement with the gumball to 4, and then I'll hold down the control key and release the left mouse button, and you see I make the extrusion at that width. ZS and enter to zoom in on that, and let's fillet this, and I'll grab this edge and this edge. And let's set all of them to be probably one and a half millimeters instead, like that. Now I don't need this surface right at the end, so Control Shift click to sub object select it and then delete. And I want to go into the right view here and get the angle of this right for the toothbrush. And let me turn off my grid snap here. So just a little bit of an angle. And another thing I like to do is to take this end profile and just try and match it up a little bit. And we still have that history on. So I'm looking at that angle there. We're going to blend between these two. And this can sometimes be a um, an iterative process. So what I like to do is match that angle and the width and then see what that gives us. 
Right, so we'll use Blend Surface, which is in the Surface Tools. And Auto Chain, I'm going to have that equals Yes, so that when I click on something that has multiple edges, it picks up the whole thing. Enter, and then the second edge will be this one. And let's move the seam by clicking and moving around, and I'll use a mid snap here right to the bottom. So the seam goes on the bottom. So if there's any texture mapping or anything, you're hiding that seam. And that looks pretty good. And then we'll join all that together. And we'll get a you broke the history warning, but this is okay because we're done editing the lofted handle but we still have an opening at the very end of the handle. And just to check it out and show you where it is, I'll use the command show edges, select the poly surface, and you can see the naked edges are right there. And you can zoom in on those. So because these three circles are in the same plane, this is a planar hole, so we can use the command cap and that caps it up automatically, makes this one closed poly surface. I'll close the edge analysis and zoom extends all viewports.